What's going on everyone? This is Van Gelis 2019 and today I'm going to show you how to pimp a plastic toy into something that looks pretty awesome. All you need is a little bit of paint, a little bit of patience and uh, this is actually a, a TV remote control believe it or not so you just basically you can point it at your TV and uh, shoot it off. So uh, yeah let's see that working now. Okay, so I got my uh, super fine wire wall. And essentially, I just need to give this a bit of a rub down. Um, again, I'm using the super fine because I really don't want to take any of this detail away. All I really want to do is just take the shine off the plastic. So, all right. So there's one or two areas that I really need to protect, and one being this red LED here. When you obviously you push the button. That little red LED lights up. And the other thing I need to protect is the actual emitter. So the thing that actually um, sends out the signal to your television, I need to mask that off as well. So to get into all the little uh, intricate uh, nooks and crannies when you're masking, that's just too fiddly to use tape. Um, I'm using this stuff called mask oil. Essentially, it's just liquid rubber that you can paint on with a brush and it'll go into all the little nooks and crannies, uh, dry as a little rubber coating. Then you can do all your painting and it simply peels off. All right, so now it's had a coat of black paint, I can actually go ahead and remove that little bit of rubber that I use to protect the uh, sensors. Right, yeah, there you are. It's gonna come away nicely, or are you gonna be a bastard? Oh, that was welded in there, but yeah, there you go, that's the LED exposed. Bonza. Right, I'll just do the other end now and then we'll Press on. Okay, so to give the um, the handle a little bit of a wood effect, I'm just gonna paint it with some brown paint. Stay tuned, because this is gonna be gripping. All right, so the um, handles had a little coat of brown paint, um, a few brush marks in there, but I'm just gonna say that's wood grain. <laughs> That'll do, so I'll just, uh, Leave him propped up here while that dries. Alrighty, so um, now that the handle's dried, I'm gonna kind of just try to make the details of this little emblem here, this eagle or whatever it is, um, kind of just stand out a little bit. Um, so essentially I've just got a mixture of um, just flat black paint and some thinners, about half and half. Just got it mixed up in my little tray here and I'll just make the, just give it a little bit of a wash and just see if I can make these details stand out a little bit. I obviously I don't want it to be completely black so I'm just going to drag this paint everywhere and anywhere so that Essentially, I'm not making everything black. I'm just trying to get the the low lights to stand out a bit. Alrighty. Next step: highlighting. All right. So the um, so the low lights that I've had a little time to dry. So um, 
Now I'm going to dry brush some highlights on today. So I'm going to use um, this uh, orange. I've already got a little bit in my tray here. And essentially, like I showed you before with the other with the other model videos, where you highlight and low light. Basically, you just get a very dry brush, a little bit of your paint on there. Basically, you just very gently go over the area you want to highlight. I might just go in one direction here because I'm kind of trying to replicate wood grain. I might try and get to that some of that little streaky pattern into it. Nice. So this um, handle's had about a day to dry, um, not just the paint itself, but the kind of uh, dry brush and texture I put over the top of it. So um, it's time to actually give the main body a little bit of texture. Now, normally, again, I would just use like a kind of silver paint to um, dry brush and make all the details pop but um, I thought I would actually try and use some rub and buff. You hear um, Adam Savage talk about this all the time uh, you kind of use it to kind of give texture to metallic objects. Um, I must confess I've had this a while it's actually a brand new tube it's not even open yet so um, yeah let's uh, let's give uh, rub and buff a bit of a whirl. Goodness, how good is Rub and Buff? That came up much better than I expected. One thing I will say with uh, Rub and Buff, I'll just show it to you again. One thing I will say about this is less is definitely more. It goes a long, long way. And I'd also thoroughly recommend um, the, the soft cloth that you apply with. I thoroughly recommend rubbing it into the cloth first before applying it to them on. The first kind of blob I put in this area just went straight down into all the little uh, nooks there. And essentially I had to brush it out and then use a little bit of a black wash to kind of fill in the black again. So um, yeah, rub and buff. Less is more and rub it into the cloth before you apply it. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way that came out. Okay, so the final, final step is to actually put some clear coat. I would normally recommend clear coat for even something that you plan to display, but this is something that you actually use, so it's probably even more important to actually give it a good coat of a clear lacquer just to kind of protect the paint so it doesn't rub off too quickly. So let's do that now. 